So, when I was 12 years old, my family was living in Denver, and really, really interestingly enough, at that same time, Landon and Kaysen's family was also living in Denver. About half a mile away from each other we lived when we were there as kids, but we did not know each other. And then right at the same time, both of our families moved to Mesa, Arizona on almost the same street. Really trippy, crazy stuff. So we lived really close to each other, uh, different school zones, but really close to each other, didn't know each other, moved on to almost the same street. So I'm going to show you guys where we lived. Right in the middle of town, I guess. But we didn't live in the middle of town. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Okay, I gotta go check out my chicken that's cooking right now. I'll be back in just a second. Look at this. Look at this. That's what I'm talking about. This is gonna be freaking delicious. Can't wait to eat it. I'll be right back though. Down this way, there's the elementary school. Okay, 96th Street. This is where my family lived. So, in the summer of, I guess it was fall, September of 1999, my family moved into this house right here with that gangrene, nasty looking pool in the backyard. Let's go check it out from Street View here. There we go. See that house right there with the uh, basketball hoop in the driveway? That was my house. Back in 1999, this is where my family moved to. Actually, that was my basketball hoop. Kaysen and I used to go out and play basketball on that driveway all the time. We left it there when my family moved away from this house, and I guess they decided to keep it out there. But so yeah, that's that's actually, you can't see that right now, can you? Let's, let's put that up there. There we go, now you can see it. That basketball hoop right there belonged to us, and now belongs to them. But this was my house. This is the house I lived in when I lived in Mesa. These people have actually painted it and made it look a lot nicer than it looked when we lived there. But uh, you go down this street right here. Actually, this was the film, or the film, this was the street we filmed one of our very first films on. Um, it was a parody on uh, the Blair Witch Project. I'm so scared. I'm really scared right now. I'm really scared. You will never, ever see that film on our channel. It is the most embarrassing thing and the worst film we have ever made, hands yeah, down. But anyways, you go down this road a bit. Down this road, down this road, down this road, and right there on the corner, you can see it now, is the house where the Sperrys lived. That's it right there. So we moved on to almost the same street at exactly the same time. And uh, we met up, and that was almost the very first thing we started doing when we first met. We decided, you know, let's make movies. We, we were way into the same type of movies, and we decided we wanted to start making movies together. So we got our cameras, uh, our parents, you know, camcorders, uh, and started making movies almost immediately when we met each other. So. These were our old stomping grounds. This street here, we used to play football out in here. Filmed all kinds of movies out in this neighborhood. And, uh, I don't know, maybe I'll edit some of those in, just clips of those. got started. Pretty crazy. Right here in 
Mesa, Arizona. First question comes from the CC Runner 98. When is the Wheel of Time video coming out? It is being premiered on the silver screen, limited screenings here locally. Actually, it might only be one. But that's happening tomorrow. And then the film will be released on YouTube, I believe, next week. So when that happens, we will be promoting it like crazy on Facebook and Twitter. So we will let you guys know when it's out. But I think it's going to be next week that it comes out on YouTube. Okay, uh, 1996 is over. I'm actually going to answer two of your questions, because there's one you asked a couple weeks ago that I didn't answer that I wanted to. Um, but this one is, what do you think uh, Super Mario Wii U is going to be? Uh, personally, I believe it'll be Super Mario Sunshine 2, for a couple of reasons. Um, I don't think that it will be Sunshine 2. I think that it will most likely be an entirely new setting, one that we haven't seen before. The reason I think that is because the way Nintendo's development teams, especially their top development teams that work on Zelda and Mario, the way that they operate, like their entire mindset, is for whatever hardware they're working on, they're going to optimize an experience for that hardware. Um, or for new control schemes, like with um, with uh, the Wii, how it had the motion controls. Like, they build their games upon game concepts from the ground up. I don't think they actually choose a setting for the game until long after they've first developed their gameplay concepts. Like, how is the player going to interact with this game? How is that going to be different from what we've done before, and how is it going to be unique on this specific platform? So I assume with the Wii U gamepad that they are devising all kinds of really interesting, cool new ways of interacting with a Mario world that has nothing to do with anything that they've done before. Entirely new gameplay concepts. And I think that they will then build the exterior, the world in which that takes place around those gameplay concepts. Which leads me to believe it'll probably be a brand new, never before seen Mario uh, universe type of experience. So, as much as I would like to see a sequel to Mario Sunshine, because that's probably my favorite of all the 3D Mario games, um, I don't think that that's what it's going to be. And then the other question that you asked um, was what unannounced Wii U games would you like to see before the end of the year? You mentioned how you'd like to see a retro-developed Metroid. I also think that would be awesome. But I think the Nintendo franchise that needs, desperately needs a comeback more than any other is Star Fox. I really, really want to see like an excellent Star Fox game developed, and I, I want to know that like that's on their minds that they you know they're trying to do something with that franchise because um, freaking Star Fox 64 is sits like easily in my top five of favorite games of all time. So it would be a shame if they kind of just let that franchise stagnate any longer. It's it's been really bad over the last decade or so. They need to revitalize it big time. Neezers wants to know if we're doing any more work on the Wario Lasky Rock videos. Um, I have like three or four songs in the works right now. I don't find tons of time to work on them when we have other projects we're working on. We got to do a lot of special effects and sound design and that sort of thing. We've been uh, doing so much work on this Wheel of Time and this other film for our friend Randall as far as special effects that I haven't had tons of time to work on music lately. So I have like three or four songs in the works. I've been working on a Chrono Trigger song. Uh, I've been working on a Monty Python and the Holy Grail kind of like compilation. Uh, so that one's going to be really funny. I've been working on a remake uh, or like a remaster of our um, Skyrim theme uh, on guitar. 
Uh, I want to do an acoustic version of um, Over the Misty Mountains from The Hobbit. There's some stuff I've been kind of cooking up there that I really want to work on. Um, I've been working on a Zelda uh, song and a Final Fantasy VI song. So I have a bunch of ideas, but those take a really long time when I've got such a big workload on the special effects, sound design side of things. So those come around a little slower, but I do have a bunch of ideas and some of them that are very close to being done. So you should see some new stuff on War Lasky Rocks soon. Captain Jeff 87 wants to know what is your favorite Rockstar game of all time and would you rather see a sequel to Dead, uh, Red Dead Redemption or Bully? Uh, I never played Bully, so I can't say whether or not I'd like to see a sequel to that because I haven't played the first one, but I loved Red Dead Redemption and I would love to see a new Red Dead game soon. The um, game was phenomenal. My favorite Rockstar game is probably Red Dead Redemption. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of... Uh, I haven't played LA, L.A. Noir, and I'm not a huge fan of Grand Theft Auto, so... Uh, Red Dead Redemption is definitely my favorite that they developed. Carnal asks... Uh, Carnal 63 asks a pretty interesting question. What would you choose? Make a Hollywood movie with your favorite characters, or, or your favorite directors and movie stars, and become rich, or get free games, free cameras, free cake for the rest of your lives? Uh, this is a pretty easy one for me. Um, you make a movie with your favorite director, your favorite movie stars. That's the thing, though, that making a movie with movie stars isn't, like, necessarily appealing to me. I would just like to make large-scale feature films, period, uh, regardless of who the actors are. Um, I don't really care about the names associated with it as long as it's someone that fits the characters and someone that does a really good job. Um, but I would much rather make a feature, big, you know, passion project kind of film than receive free cake and free games and cameras for the rest of my life. Because I make a big feature that's really successful, I just buy all that stuff anyways. I have tons of money left over, so. I'd much rather make a big feature of my own than receive free stuff. It's kind of my dream, so. Cam Ailey, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, do you like scary games like Amnesia or Slender? Would you consider doing Let's Plays of those games? I actually did do a Slender video uh, a couple months ago. That's on our gaming channel. Um, not a big fan of Slender, though. And two, if you could have any superpower, which would it be? Um, also, I do have Amnesia, and I haven't played tons of that yet, so that's a possibility I could do that on the gaming channel. And also, this other game you mentioned, um, Witch, I'm totally going to look that up and do a video on that. I'll look that up. You can look for that on the gaming channel here in the next couple days. I think I'm going to try that out. Superpower. Any superpower, what would it be? Um, flight is one that comes to mind most readily, but I'm not sure if that's true. I think... It would be really cool to be able to read people's thoughts. Um, I don't know. I, I guess that, like, being aware, being able to look ahead, you know, kind of be steps ahead of people around you or your enemies or whatever, like being able to read their thoughts, see where they're going, that would be pretty cool. Um, I'd also like to be able to shoot enormous energy balls out of my hands like Dragon Ball Z, just, like, build huge balls of energy and just blast the crap out of stuff, so some form of combination of those, and if I can't have a combination, I don't know flight would be cool, but like I don't know if I'd find tons of use for it in just everyday life whereas like if I could read people's thoughts, that would like give me a significant advantage in almost any situation I'm in that would be really cool, I think that's what I would choose and if I could just blast stuff with, like, energy balls, that'd be sick, too. I, I don't know. One of those three. Uh, one more question from Sasha. Hey, Mike, did you see Sukiyaki Western Django? I've not seen it. I've not even heard of it until you just mentioned it. Now I'm really curious. I'm going to go check it out. All right, so check this out. Uh, it's just, it's called uh, We Street You. It's a new app. Jeez, open up. And um, it's basically just like Google Maps um, with Street View, but like 
it's really cool because like on the controller, as you see, you can kind of turn and like look around in like 360 degrees. So it's like pretty cool. But I'm going to show you guys um, where Wari Alaski got started. <laughs> 